Welcome to your source for research innovation news insights and commentary. This is Research Business Daily Report, and we're proudly sponsored today and this week by Curiosity Insights Stream, a consumer insights company helping clients derive deep human insights through social media listening. Jordan Weissman wrote on Slate a searing piece entitled, We Truly Have No Idea If Online Ads Work. That headline kind of says it all. And his commentary is based on research from 2013 that collaborated economists with eBay's internal research lab. They reported a simple, perhaps startling conclusion. For a large, well-known brand, search ads are probably worthless. eBay has just re-released those earlier findings through the National Bureau of Economic Research. One of the eBay study co-authors, Stephen Tadellis, who in the last year has become a University of California Berkeley business professor, told Weissman, quote, we know a lot less than the advertising industry would like us to think we know, end of quote. And he explained that much of the online advertising data that we have right now is obviously self-generated from websites. That, he says, makes it fairly useless and pretty simplistic. He pointed to large-scale Christmas online advertising campaigns as one great example. He says it's difficult to tell how much of any significant sales boost might be creditable to the advertising versus the holidays demand to buy something. Example number two from Tadellis, a Google search that involved Amazon and a product name. Tadellis claimed that if you had gone to Amazon, the exact purchase would have taken place regardless. He strongly suggests that testing be done by others similar to the path followed by eBay. Namely, eBay pulled ads from Yahoo and MSN searches while leaving advertising next to prominent brand names on Google. eBay concluded virtually no difference in sales results. Moving on, SampleCon 2014, the participant-driven sample exclusive conference, had its second go-round last week in New Orleans. Now, we couldn't make it down there, but understanding the important dimensions of the discussions that were taking place, we reached out to gain expert impressions from a conference participant, Chuck Miller of Digital Marketing and Measurement. And Chuck graciously filled us in about the meeting's content and ahas. Thanks, Bob. Last week, I was fortunate enough to attend the second SampleCon conference in New Orleans. It had attendance of about 120 people, which was up quite a bit from the first conference. Um, it was a solid group of presentations, really nice breath, great content, and great discussion around online sampling. The conference was kicked off by Ramsey McGrory, a um, gentleman from the online ad space that talked about programmatic buying and selling of online ads and how that might be one possible future for online sample. Um, this was maybe the one area that some of the attendees thought it was a little self-serving or federated because they do run an exchange, but it was really great conversation, um, great um, thought-provoking discussion about what the future of online sample might hold. Day one also had um, a number of panels, uh, things like trends in sample software technology, the pros and cons of automation, kind of rethinking the respondent relationship, some lessons from Google. Um, stuff on sample quality and engagement of mobile respondents. I think that really the, the keys coming out of that were, um, you know, to what role does the, the person play in the delivery of sample? Um, kind of that pros and cons of automation. Is this something that is going to evolve to a point where um, you just uh, request what you need and it's delivered, um, you know, programmatically to uh, your survey? Or is there a role for the person involved? Um, and to what degree should they uh, add value to the whole sampling process? I think the uh, one of the others was um, around the lessons from Google, how they've set up um, their paywall um, or they, they help people uh, use a paywall to, to uh, leverage content and how um, in those interactions you've got really short, discrete um, collection of data um, through short surveys and whether or not the industry needs to think more about that, kind of the whole bite-sized chunks philosophy. Um, I think some of the key themes that kind of permeated all of these were um, the implications of moving to mobile. I think one of the great ahas coming out of it was that with um, the younger audience and their adoption of mobile, um, you know, they're going to force our hands to adapt our practices uh, much more quick, quickly than we would like. Um, it's something that um, maybe the tenor of the conference with the, the small group 
um, led to more open discussion about that than just the, the general conference setting where it's presentation with a few questions. Um, so great discussion around that. I think the other one was really um, kind of the role of MR in our evolving measurement-centric business world and how if we're not careful, um, non-MR data streams are going to supplant MR in a lot of cases. I get a good, um, really good dialogue around that probably uh, based on the size. Also, on day one of the conference, Gail Fugit and I delivered some of the work from ARF's FAP2. That was really well received and, and good discussion around that. Day two kicked off with Peter Milla, discussion of data privacy, um, kind of setting the context for where the world is today. And from there, we went into some breakout groups. People broke out by sample buyer, seller, technologist, and those focused on quality. The groups really met to talk about some of the key questions facing the online sampling industry. And then we all came back together um, and to discuss those. We put up flip charts with the key questions. People walked around with stickers and kind of voted for those things that they felt were most important to the industry. And everybody agreed that uh, those breakout groups would have ongoing discussion through email. So I hope that um, something goes uh, well beyond um, the discussions we had next week. Um, in general, I think the conference is really worthwhile for those that were most aligned with uh, online sample, the buyers and sellers. Um, it was dialogue that didn't take place at other conferences. It was really a deep dive into the nuts and bolts of online sampling um, and with great open discussion, as I've said. You know, I think cynics would say that uh, we've been having a lot of this discussion for many years now, but I think, um, again, the tenor of the conference had a little more urgency to it, in part because it was a small group. Um, with lots of discussion rather than just presentations with quick Q&A sessions. Um, it was basically a who's who of online sampling. I think there were some notable absences from thought leaders from Research Now to Luna and SSI, but otherwise it was a great group of people um, that I think are going to carry this discussion forward uh, for our, our collective betterment. Our thanks to Chuck for his assistance. That's your Research Business Daily Report sponsored by Curiosity Insight Stream, a consumer insights company helping clients derive deep human insights through social media listening. To learn more about Curiosity Insight Stream, please visit curiosityinsightstream.com. We hope you have a great research day and please join us back here tomorrow.